Okay, good evening everyone. Okay, what happened to my laptop? <laughs> okay, so well, this is light. Okay, so my name is Yuhan and I'm currently working um, as a software engineer in South Sephora. And um, so I'm gonna give a non-technical talk. I would like to, I took an unconventional career path. So today I would like to share my journey into technology like how did I end up in my current role. And my handler is like Bei Yuhan, my full name actually. You can find me on LinkedIn, Facebook, or Instagram, or GitHub with the exact same handler. Okay, so just a little bit about myself. Um, I did my bachelor degree in banking and finance, thinking that I would grow up and work in a bank. So when I was a student, I had little exposure or concept about technology. What is technology? I don't know. So I didn't even hear people using terms like coding or programming back then. I remember Blogspot was very popular when I was in secondary school. <laughs> and so I actually tried to create a blog. But when I tried to edit a HTML somehow, I managed to crash my computer. And since then, I gave up on it. <laughs> Okay, so like I said, I took a pretty unconventional career path. Um, after I graduated from uni, I started off in an e-commerce startup in Singapore as a merchandiser in Luxola. Then thereafter, I went to Maybank as a mortgage specialist. It is a sales job. Then I went to an ad tech agency as an account manager. And now I'm in Sephora as a software engineer. So every year I change a job <laughs> <laughs> in a different role. Okay, so it started in Luxola. We had an in-house engineering team. So um, my job scope involved a lot of administrative and repetitive tasks, which is very manual and time consuming, right? So I started learning how to use Excel functions like VLOOKUP, which, you know, to my surprise, made my job a lot easier and faster. So I was fascinated by Excel, and I started researching on Google, like, okay, how can I automate all my tasks? I even created, like, macros with all the VBA scripts I found online. So that was a start, <laughs> I guess. And there was also this colleague um, in Luxola that actually wanted to learn how to code. So we decided to do a Ruby on Rails course on Codecademy. It's a free online tool where you can learn how to code. So we chose Ruby on Rails because Luxola was built on Ruby on Rails. <laughs> so then I move on to a bank. And um, in the bank, I was working for long hours every day. It was a very fast-paced environment. In contrast, my job in the ad tech agency was very slow-paced and I get to go home on time. So I decided to make full use of my time and learn programming as suggested by Google. Because <laughs> I Googled, I was like, what do I do when I'm bored? Then they were like, oh, <laughs> you know, pick up a new language, but no time to practice a new language with a human. So I was like, okay, maybe a programming language sounds like a better idea. <laughs> so I remember, oh, Ruby on Rails again, because that's the only programming language I knew about. <laughs> Okay, so where should I start? Google. Yes, so I did uh, what most people would try to do nowadays, and I just went to Google how to learn Ruby on Rails. <laughs> and actually, in fact, there's a lot of online tutorials um, on how to pick up programming online. Um, but I actually have difficulty studying because I could not even set up my environment. <laughs> I had no idea where I'm supposed to run the code. <laughs> or what is the expected results, and there was just a lot of warnings and error messages where you try to run all the codes somehow on your terminal. So I decided I need some help. So I attended a classroom-based course in Ruby on Rails for beginners organized by Alpha Cam and Jolly Good Code. So I think I paid $750 for the, code, for the course. <laughs> Um, it's a very short course, I think it's just 24 hours. Uh, but I think it's a good investment because you get help to set up your environment, which is a start. And it provided me with the basic knowledge of what are the necessary tools required to build a website and how to use them. So basically, I had no idea 
of like how an editor, a terminal, you know, works. Like I have no idea. So it was a good start. <laughs> so after the course, I got a bit bored of coding alone because there's also a lack of feedback on your work actually when you do it alone. So I Googled again and I found um, the Tech Ladies Bootcamp back then. Um, so I decided to apply for it and I got in. I think the bootcamp gave me a very good experience in working as a team and also exposed me to the community and networks in the industry itself. So like I said, um, I did not really enjoy the ad tech role. Um, job. And so after the boot camp, I started considering tech as a career option. Right? So I actually applied for a formal course in NUS, um, graduate diploma course in NUS ISS in system analysis. Right? Uh, because I had the stigma that it would be difficult to land a tech job without a formal education. Um, but since I had some time before school starts, I decided to quit my job and um, I tried applying for some internship by sending emails actually. <laughs> and so I can figure out whether I would really like it as a job before I commit into a formal course. But then um, I realized that it's actually possible to find a job without a formal education. <laughs> so someone actually offered me a full-time job in a small agency without any formal tech background um, and actually very little experience in tech, per se. Um, but then I was also lucky to be given the opportunity to join Sephora's engineering team as a software engineer because I knew the team from Luxola. So Sephora actually bought over Luxola, which is a startup, and the entire engineering team moved to Sephora. Yeah, so I chose to join Sephora eventually. And I actually gave up on the graduate diploma course because um, I was offered a full time in Sephora. So I feel like if you can secure a job, I think that's the best option because you get paid and you actually get exposed to the actual working environment. And that's where I think you'll be forced to pick up, you know, quickly and get all the relevant knowledge fast to be effective as soon as possible. So um, I started off in Sephora not as a software engineer, but as a support engineer. So basically, I was the front line to serving the internal team on issues regarding um, all our services, per se. But it was a very steep learning curve, to be honest, because um, I had little experience and um, I could not even navigate around the code base. It was a monolith, per se. And um, I could not resolve any issue for close to a month or two, maybe. So I spent a lot of time after work reading scripts written by my predecessor, like trying to figure out like, what the system, you know, how is the system supposed to be working? Like what's the intended behavior of the system itself? Right, and C, and also to pick up Ruby uh, syntax, etc. how to write the code, the scripts as well. So it wasn't easy, and it doesn't feel good being unproductive per se, because I'm not being effective at all for two months. So there was a lot of extra effort that I need to put in, in order to be effective in the team. But as time passed, it gets easier, and I could solve more issues. So, Expectations versus reality. <laughs> I think that a software engineering role turned out to be very different from what I expected. Right? So you might have the passion for programming, but it does not mean that you will like it as a job. <laughs> so working on your own project and doing it as a career is a very different ball game. It might not be as fun as you think because you do not have much control over what you do. There's PMs, there are business stakeholders, there are you know, bosses. <laughs> so, um, and it's actually more difficult to do well in this domain than I have thought. But I learned a lot in this role and I don't regret doing it. I think programming is still a very valuable skill 
regardless or not whether you intend to do it as a career, because um, I think programming can help to streamline and automate processes in any industry or roles you are in. So maybe you can be more valuable as the technical person in a non-technical role in your own domain expertise. So that's it. That's my experience and my tech journey. Thank you.